So before I start talking about uh, parties and the policies in the upcoming election, we need to discuss one more thing, which is what issues does the Scottish Parliament deal with? Now I'm going to be using two phrases quite a lot in this video, reserved matters and devolved matters. Reserved matters are those that have been reserved um, by the UK Parliament and ha the Scottish Parliament has little or no say on policies surrounding that. Devolved matters are those that have been devolved to the Scottish Parliament where they've got most or all of the say on those issues. Most campaigns will focus on devolved issues because that's the areas where the elected MSPs can actually do good work themselves instead of just trying to lobby Westminster. In terms of how the matters are distributed, the Scotland Act in 1998, later amended by the Scotland Act of 2012, specifically states which matters are reserved with everything else being devolved by default. So let's run through some of these reserved matters that you won't be hearing about too much in this campaign. They generally fall into one of two categories, either issues where it wouldn't make sense for the UK to have different policies in different parts, or where it is more useful to have a single entity serving the whole UK. A good example of the first case is immigration. Since there are no border controls between Scotland and England, it wouldn't make sense for Scotland to be giving the leave to remain to certain people that England wasn't because they'd be able to get there anyway. In the second case, an obvious example is national security, be this either military or intelligence services, it makes far more sense for them, there to be a single unified body because it can better coordinate our efforts. Other reserved matters include the Constitution, including the Crown, the Union and the UK. International development, both in terms of aid and trade, although it is worth noting that Scotland will try and make its own links with the uh, other countries to boost things like tourism and trade with those nations. Home affairs, which includes things ranging from firearms to data protection to drug abuse. Trade and industry, including insolvency of businesses, intellectual property and competition. Employment, things like trade unions and health and safety regulation. Social security, as in benefits and the like. Broadcasting, including the BBC. Outer space and time, so we can't have our own Scottish time zone. Devolved matters include a lot of things that were always somewhat separate even before the Scottish Parliament was re-established. Things like justice, as we've always had our own Scots law, and education, ranging from nurseries up to universities. Other devolved matters include health, barring a few issues like abortion and which drugs are regulated for the UK market. Tourism, economic development, housing, local authorities, i.e. councils, agriculture, forests and fishing, sports and the arts, and the environment. These matters are controlled almost in their entirety by the Scottish Parliament, and expect things like health and education to feature highly in people's election material. There are a few issues that are a bit more split between Scotland and the UK as a whole. Transport is one of these, with road, air and international travel all being reserved, whereas bus, rail, the road network and inter-island boat services are all devolved. Energy is also somewhat swept, with your fossil fuels and nuclear fuels being reserved, as along with the national grid itself, but renewable sources such as wind and tidal power are uh, devolved. And one big last one, everyone's favourite thing in the world, taxation. So VAT is reserved, although Scotland will get half of the money raised by VAT in Scotland come 2017. Income tax and their bans are reserved to the UK Parliament, but the Scottish Government does have the ability to raise or lower the rate by three pence in the pound. This does have to apply to all the tax bans simultaneously. It's worth noting that no Scottish Government has actually used these powers yet, despite the fact they do often ask for more fiscal powers. As of 2017, all money raised by income tax in Scotland will stay in Scotland, which may make parties consider raising them. Devolved taxes at the minute are the Land and Building Transaction Tax, which replaced stamp duty last year, Landfill Tax, and Council Tax and Non-Domestic Rates, although the rates for these are set by the local authorities. All of the money from these, raised from these taxes will stay in Scotland. Air duty is going to be devolved in 2017, which as part of the Scotland Bill, which leads us nicely on to the Scotland Bill. So after the referendum, a commission was set up to decide on new powers for the Scottish Parliament. And without getting into too much of the nitty gritty, it will give the Scottish Parliament new powers over certain taxes, such as air duty and getting the money raised by income tax and half of all VAT receipts, elections, including altering constituency boundaries and lowering the voting use to 16, which was actually a power given to the Parliament early, top-ups to various reserve benefits and control over some other welfare benefits, and loads of other things ranging from road signs to the Crown Estate to commissioners of Northern Lighthouses. Still no new Scottish Times on though. So now that you know what issues are controlled by Holyrood, we can start talking about what each party actually wants to do. As, as a side note, I've tried my best to be impartial in this video and the previous two about voting. From my next video onwards, I'm making no such claim, but I'll be discussing my voting history and potential bias in my next video so that you can be aware of how horribly biased I'm going to be. I'd also like to give special thanks to one of my old Modern Studies teachers, Alan Richardson, for looking over the script for me, and of course to all of you for watching.